Hey guys, in this video, I wanted to take a deeper look into a new HubSpot integration, this time in the form of Invoice Stack. Invoice Stack is essentially a integration that is native to HubSpot that allows you to plug in QuickBooks or your Xero into your HubSpot CRM, meaning that you can have live invoices raised from deal closures within HubSpot as a tool. That's what it is. Now, let's show you how it works. So as mentioned, guys, Invoice Stack is available online. It is provided by the great guys over at Weave & Blend. It is very much a third party integration, meaning that, that there would be a license cost to utilizing this, which can be found on their pricing page. But again, it is native to HubSpot, meaning it is a one click connection. In terms of what you can do with that, as mentioned, it does work with both QuickBooks and Xero. So if you're using any of these kind of accountancy tools, uh, they can plug in to Invoice Stack, which then plugs into HubSpot. And again, you can get a demo or start a free trial. But essentially what we will need to do is you will be given an account like this. And it does have a very intuitive kind of uh, onboarding in terms of like getting you off the ground and getting this set up um, correctly. The way this kind of works is that you can connect your accounting software. So you can see here, I've connected my zero instance and under the HubSpot tab, connected my um, HubSpot portal, right? So you can see it's connected to my demo environment and you can also subsequently set automation up, right? So I could say when an invoice is created in zero, move the deal into invoice created as a stage in HubSpot. We can then say when the first invoice is paid, move that to invoice sent. And then when all the invoices have been paid, you could have that go into invoice paid. Consequently or alternatively, you could have, for example, invoice partially paid and invoice fully paid as stages, and you could automate it based on that. As mentioned, if the deal has just one invoice or so 100% upfront, for example, that can just go from created to invoice paid. So you can play around with the way that your organization is ultimately built to run. Lastly, you can say if the invoice is overdue, move that deal into an invoice overdue stage. You can do more stuff in the advanced settings. So if you pray that, you can also say, for example, if you're on a pro subscription, you can say, move that deal to that and set this property as a certain value, which is really pivotal if you've got finance um, information you wanna pass back to HubSpot, right? So you could say, for example, the date that it was maybe paid, you wanna push that back into HubSpot, you can do that, right? So you can have your custom field mapping so that when it moves in that deal into the stage, also update this deal property to tell you when the installment was paid. You can get very creative with the integration and kind of the makeup of it. In terms of the preferences, there are different ways you can use Invoice Stack. So you can have it so that invoices take a, a HubSpot first approach, i.e. the invoice is raised in HubSpot and then it added to zero automatically in draft or approved. Or alternatively, you can actually approve and send the invoices without logging into zero. So if your sales team and finance team are amalgamated into one, i.e. You're, um, you're a smaller organization, you may want to use the sales team route. If you have a finance and a sales team and you want the sales team to hand it over and then the finance team to approve the invoice in zero, you can take the finance team approach to the tool. So whatever way your team is made up or the organization works, we can do that. In terms of like creating the line items, you can also prove due diligence, meaning you've got a clear rev up strategy, meaning that the products that you put on your invoice in zero, for example, correspond to those that are in HubSpot line items, meaning that you no longer have discrepancies. Oh, we sold a uh, HubSpot onboarding, but then we call that CRM onboarding in uh, your finance system, it creates a central source of truth, essentially. Alternatively, if you don't have that and you don't go down the line items route in kind of zero, you can just type them in and have give the control to HubSpot, essentially. Again, you can put references and also add in payment schedules. Once that is all done, you've basically set up the integration, which now means we can go over to the safety of HubSpot, right? If I jump over to my HubSpot tab, you can see I've got a pipeline. On this pipeline, I've got different stages and different deals within those stages. What you will notice is when I've got my deal, I've got deal 16, I can click into deal 16. And as usual, you can see the general information. You can see the information I hold on the deal. And more specifically, what you will see is on the right hand side, I've now got an invoice stack because it's connected into my pool, right? So I can do lots of fun things with that. So I could say when the deal goes into this stage, I want to create an invoice and Lord behold, my zero is at my fingertips in HubSpot, right? So I can now draft my invoice. I can search for the contact. So I could actually put Samuel Banks in there. If there is no contact in zero, I can add the contact, right? So I can say, oh, yep, Felius, the contact name is Samuel Banks. So that's the first name. The last name is Banks, the email. If you've got a contact linked, so you can see here in my example opportunity, Ashley Regan is on the deal. If I then create the invoice and it doesn't know that, so I don't have the contact, I can press add new and already the contact information across from the actual contact is already placeholder in there. I just press save. And what you will see is now I'm starting to build my invoice 
all within HubSpot, right? So I'm going to say it's a sales, uh, whether you play VAT or not, depending on where you are. I want to invoice this from the um, today. The status is it's in draft because I want it to go over. The line item, so I can type that in. I can add a new line item. So if I wanted to, I can delete that and override the line item. I can say, uh, example product, like so. You can also do repeating and standard invoices. So you can put the price in there. So I'm gonna say this is 150 pounds. If there's a discount on that, I'm gonna put 25 pounds discount. The reference, that could be the PO number. So 000001, like so. And any internal notes, right? The best bit about this is I can add as many invoices I wanna do. So again, what you can do here is split up the overall invoice value into how many invoices that is, right? So if it's 125 pounds, essentially the way this would work is 62 pounds 50 would be allocated to two invoices to make up that, right? So there's two invoices that amounts is split between. If I press create, you can see it will create the different invoices. What that will then do is attach that to the consequent deal, right? So you can have more than one invoice that makes up the deal amount. Once you're happy, if you press save draft, what that will then do, if you press sync to zero, it will tell you your invoices have been synced, right? Amazing. If I now go and press continue and head over to my zero instance, if I go over to business, and I go to invoices, you'll see my invoice has been created automatically from HubSpot into zero, all within the UI, right? The status has been inherited. The amount has been inherited. I can now, as the finance team, click into the invoice and I can approve and email it. So sales team have done all my job. It's integrated. It's come across. I can now send that out. That's how powerful this tool is. The amount of time this saves in terms of like filling in deal properties. I can then approve it. I can send it. The great thing about this, Look at the right hand side, invoice stack. I can see one invoice, the status is synced. I can now see as a sales rep, I can go into my deal and see where the status is. So the start date, the invoice total, I can view and amend this. More importantly, what I can also do is if that's recalled, etc., that will all work as intended. Last but not least, once that invoice has been sent, it will go on to be paid, right? So this invoice will actually go out. This is what it will look like in this example. Based on the automation we've set up, so if we go back to our pipeline, what that will then do is you can see there, he's got the actual deal. You can then have stages like this. So based on the automation, what we can actually do now is when that's actually sent, it will put it into invoice created as a net new deal. So the invoice is now put into a pipeline for you. As soon as that pays, it will then automatically move it into invoice paid, which means you can then leverage this through automation. So similar to how you deal pipelines and you deal ways of automating it, you can now create automated actions such as invoice paid. You could send like a thank you. You could take this and run with it, right? You could put reach desk in here. So you could say, for example, when it's paid, send them a coffee voucher. I mean, defeats the objective. You earn money, so you're giving the money away. Like I get it. And what this really allows you to do is bring finance and sales closer together for centralized 360 on the customer. That's invoice that. Uh, I really want to take a deep dive on this tool. I think it's great. I think it's gonna help loads of organizations scale and grow, cuts down admin time. Your teams will work closer together and it allows you to have a revenue first mindset. As always, if you enjoyed this video, definitely drop a follow. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're using invoice stack and otherwise I will uh, speak to you next time. Take care.